So I rejoice today. servant head and said, you wicked servant, 
I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart, it says. This is how my heavenly Father will treat you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. It's not bad enough that we have to forgive. Give from our what? From our heart. So, the title of my message today is simple. It's forgive. It's a matter of the heart. Forgive. It's a matter of the heart. We're going to talk about the power. Constantly reminds me of the book of First Corinthians. 
that love keeps no record of wrong. All right, boy, you gotta go that fast. Love keeps no record of wrong. Look at Chris is smiling. <laughs> First anniversary just came and went, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Used to, uh, used to bully it. And I, you know, I'm big, so 
and so I come up, you know, can't be robbed my brother. And so I always stood up to him, I ain't kidding. Well, 30 years later, maybe not that long, I was at a gas station and this guy came up to me. He said, I, I, aren't you a rattler? Aren't you Tony Rattler? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm William Graham. This talk, and, and, and my heart sank you know, for a minute because he's the kid that I used to fight. You know, he wasn't going to fight me, but you know, all of a sudden here he was, and I'm having to say, Oh, hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. Are you going to? But anyway, bullying is a real problem, and you don't forget the bullies are. And we keep hurt inside of us, don't we? Yeah. These kinds of issues and other kinds of issues can have a huge effect on us. And as we look at our scripture lesson, the man who owed the king money begged the king to have mercy on him. Some of us are in trouble with the bank right now. Thanks, son. Typically like this king. But the king had mercy on the debt. And, and, and he forgave the debt. He forgave the debt and let the man go. The king had the right to put his, this, this guy's family and everything and take everything that the guy possessed and sell it to get the debt that was owed him. But he had mercy on the debtor. So the debtor leaves the king's presence, having been forgiven, and he sees someone who owes him money. And he goes up to him and, and demands that this person repay what he owes him. So Janice is the king of the queen. She's forgiving me. But I see Michelle. Michelle owes me. And I demand Michelle pay me what she owes me now. Not tomorrow, but right now. Michelle says, I can't pay you right now. Please have mercy on me. And I decide, no, I'm not going to have mercy on you. I send you to jail. I send you to debtor's prison. And I send your family to debtor's prison. And I take all that you owe me. Well, how many of you know that what you do in the dark will come out in the light? It will come out in the light. Somebody saw it and reported it back to the king and said, you know the guy you had mercy on? Well, he wasn't as kind to someone who owed him a debt. I read somewhere that the world's worst prison is the prison of an unforgiving heart. The world's worst prison is the prison of an unforgiving heart. Why do you think that's the case? We just admitted that we have run into people who have harmed us. And we've had that knot in our stomach. Mm -hmm. And as that knot grows, we tighten up. How many of you know that stress can bring on cancer? Mm -hmm. It can bring on cancer. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing to ourselves through unforgiveness, we're making ourselves sick. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's the truth. We're making ourselves sick with unforgiveness. And we're also blowing blessings from the Lord because the Lord says, if you forgive, I, you know, forgive. Let's turn to the Lord's prayer. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. 9. We know the Lord's prayer is more appropriate call the disciples prayer because this is what Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray. Say, Lord, come. 
our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then what does it say? say and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Forgive us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. There are five things that we learn from this prayer. First of all, we acknowledge that the name of our Lord is hallowed or holy. Number two, we acknowledge that the kingdom of God exists and we welcome it into our presence. Number three, we acknowledge that God's will is preeminent over our lives. God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Number four, we acknowledge that there are evil forces at work in the world and that we need God's help and deliverance in our daily walk. And finally, and this is where it relates to our subject today, we acknowledge our sins and we ask God to forgive us and we seek his help as we forgive others who have done us wrong. We ask for him to help us to forgive those who have done us wrong. Uh, and so what we're saying is that we can't forgive on our own. It's going to take Jesus to help us forgive some of those things that, that hurt us and some of those people who have hurt us. But what about the things that we have done to ourselves? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. There's some things that we have done that we just can't forgive ourselves. Things that go real deep inside of us. In the church, we talk a lot about the fact that we are forgiven that Jesus paid a debt for us on the cross. He took my sins and your sins and the sins of the world to the cross. We say in the church all the time that we are set free by the blood of the Lamb. What does this really mean in practicality? Free from what? We are free from the debt of sin that we owe because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So if God were to come right now and say you owe me a debt of sin, would, would I be able to repay that debt? Would I be able to pay the debt of sin that I, the things that I have done in my life the answer to that is no. Jesus stood, stood as a substitute for me and for you. And for all of humanity who declare that he is their Lord and Savior. The song says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. Jesus paid my debt of sin. Jesus paid your debt of sin. Without Jesus, we can't forgive. I can't forgive Michelle. I can't forgive Chris. I can't forgive that. Without Jesus, we can't forgive the person who abused us. Without Jesus, we can't forgive the one who stole from us. Without Jesus, we were talking about uh, uh, cyberbullying and, and all the mess that the kids have to go through today on Facebook, the sexting, the, the uh, things that drive these kids here. some to, to suicide. We were talking about one child who was bullied, cyberbullied, and, and killed herself, hung herself. That mother who found her baby hanging from a rope in the garage, how is she going to forgive those kids 
who bullied her daughter to suicide without Jesus. How's it gonna happen? Look at what happened just last week. And the naval yard started off Monday at the naval yard in, in Washington, D.C. Guys, a guy came in, he was he had a contract was clearance. Pastor Jim, no, and I know about that. We were federal contractors. And we had to have clearance to get onto federal facilities. So you go up to the gate and you show them your ID as you can go. Know. So he was able to walk into that secure area with guns and start shooting up the place. Twelve people lost their lives. It was all over the national news, all week, all over here. Then Thursday, right here in Chicago, kids and people are playing and walking around in a park. Was it 13 who was shot? Right here in Chicago, and a six-year-old shot in the face. How does that mother forgive the person who shot her baby in the face. How do you forgive that? How do we, how can we forgive without Jesus? Church. Some of us have been hurt by the church. Ourselves. 
when we realize how completely Christ has forgiven us, it should produce in us a free and a generous attitude of forgiveness toward others. And when we don't forgive others, we are setting ourselves outside and above Christ and his law. Jesus loves us. And it's, it's, it's a love that is complete. The Bible calls it agape, the agape love of God. It's, it's, it's a complete and total love. It's a love that, that transcends all love. Jesus said in his word, a new commandment I give unto you, and that is that you love one another. And this commandment of love does not begin anything that you might find in the Old Testament. It simply encapsulates the law of Moses through the law of love. Because if you love, then you won't steal, or you won't kill, or you won't uh, lie on someone. If you love, you won't be involved in sexual sin. If you love, you will forgive. Amen. Some of us here today, we're holding on to things that we've done in the past. And God is saying to each and every one of us today, I have forgiven you. Now forgive yourselves. If you're holding on to something that has become a stronghold in your life, Jesus is saying, release it now. Today you hear my words. We just read that in this one. Today you hear my words. Harden not your heart. We see that this unforgiving servant was severely punished for his act of forgiveness. is that there's a terrible place set aside for those with an unforgiving heart. So that means that we have to forgive the abuser. We must forgive the husband who stepped out on us. We must forgive our children Disappointments. We must forgive our boss for not giving the raise or promoting them. Forgive the sister in Christ who gossiped against you. Forgive the pastor who just didn't recognize the gifts that God had given you. Forgive the daughter who had a baby out of wedlock and couldn't forgive herself for doing the same thing. Forgive yourself for the abortion that you had many years ago. Forgive yourself for the many lies that you told and the gossip that you spread on the telephone. Forgive yourself for being lazy. Forgive your family for the same reason. This one's me. Forgive myself for all the shopping that I've done when I probably should have been using the money for something else. Forgive yourself for thinking badly of, of your neighbor. Forgiveness. But we can do it with the help of God. Unforgiveness is a stronghold that will weigh you down. And it will keep you walking in circles going nowhere fast. 
Jesus. And if you think about it, you're holding on to something that God has already brought it out. We talk about unforgiveness as a, as a stronghold. We have to realize that a stronghold is a place of fortification. When nothing goes in, and more importantly, nothing goes out, unless the gates are open. Now imagine that stronghold around your heart. Think about those who have done you wrong. Think about the wrongs that you have done. Imagine that gate encapsulated in your heart. Now pray that God will lift the gates of that fortification. Because whatever it is you're holding on to, you don't need it anymore. Whatever has you tied up in knots, you don't need that thing anymore. If it's about somebody else, I turn that person over to Jesus. And let him go. If it's something that you have done that you can't forgive yourself for, Jesus is already for you. Now you turn that thing over to Jesus and let him work it out. Now imagine those gates being lifted. Dr. King said, free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. No more, no more way on. That strong one is a weapon that Satan uses to keep you depressed. It's a weapon, a weapon that Satan uses to keep us addicted. It's a weapon that Satan uses to justify wrongdoing. But if you turn that thing over to Jesus and let it work it out, he will free you. And the Bible says, he who the sun sets free is a free angel. In the story of the unforgiving sermon, and I invite you to go home and read this in its entirety. Verse 32 says, Then the master called the sermon in and said to him, You wicked sermon. Canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Should you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And the anger of his master handed him over to the generous to be tortured until he should pay back what he owed. Then Jesus said, This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Forgive. From your heart. Forgive. It's a matter of the heart. When you forgive, you open yourself up to the blessings of the Lord that make a rich and which add no sorrow. I have to keep saying this. Jesus is already forgiven you. You are already free. Romans 1, 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ, because through Christ, in the death, the law of the Spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. You are not been forgiven. Can you can you feel that today? You have been forgiven. Now walk in the freedom of the forgiveness and gift that Jesus has already given you, and free yourself from any bondage of unforgiveness.
that you might be in your heart today. Amen. Because the mom wants her to have a good boy. 